My ladies and gentlemen, Bertha Worry here, trusting that you are doing well, my sister, my brother. So how are you today? How are you today? How is the weather in your neighborhood? Uh, the weather is uh, beautiful here, and um, but I still decided to just, just do my video inside. So may I ask you, did you take time out to study the word or listen to the word? Did you? Did you? Remember, we must, we must uh, study the word. And we know it is laid on planet Earth, and the solution is Jesus Christ. And he stayed, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Father God, right now, I ask you that you will decrease me, Father God, so that you will be increased, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, scripture reading is coming from Joshua chapter 13, verses 1. Joshua 13, verses 1, and it reads, Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in ears, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's get into our topic, and we are in chapter 10 of the truth about angels. You know we want the truth and nothing but the truth, right? The truth about angels, and we are in chapter 10, chapter 10, and it says, Angels from the time of the judges to the early kingdom. And then this one here is, um, the subtitle will be Christ as the angel of the Lord. When God sent his angels anciently to minister or communicate to individual, when they learned that it was an angel they had seen and talked with, they were struck with awe and were afraid that they should die. They had such exalted view of the terrible um, majestic majesty and the power of God. Let me, let me repeat that. They had such an exalted view of the terrible majestic and the power of God. They thought to be brought into such close connection with one direct from his holy presence would destroy them. And this is coming from uh, Judges chapter 6 verses 22 to 23 and also Judges 13, 21 and 22, Judges 5, 13 through 16. And also if you have the book um, Spiritual Gift volume 4b and it's on the page um, 152. After the death of their leader, Joshua, and the elders who were associated with them, the people began gradually to relapse into idolatry. The Lord did not permit the sins of his people to pass without rebuke. There were still faithful worshippers in Israel and many others from habits and early association attending the worship of God at the, at the tabernacle. A large company were assembled upon the occasion of a religious feast when an angel of God having first appeared at Gilgad revealed himself to the congregation at Shiloh. The angel, the same that appeared to Joshua at the taking of Jericho, was no less a personage than the Son of God. He showed them that he had that let me go back. He showed them that he had not broken his promises to them, but they themselves had violated their solemn uh, covenant. And it came to pass when the angels of the Lord spoke these words unto all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they sacrificed there unto the Lord, but their repentance produced no lasting results. Mm. What does that say about us today, my sister and my brother? So as we go through um, the time of the judges to the early kingdom, we could see ourselves in, uh, in the story, okay, because all the, the, the leaders, 
that had had an experience with the Lord from um, from Egypt all the way to Canaan, they knew, so they um, relate the information uh, to their children's children, and as time goes on, you know what happened there, forget, or they thinking that is that is old information that was back in those days, we don't do that now, this is a new time, not realizing that the same God that made promises to us, and we had vowed to keep those promises, is the same God that still asks us and still require of us, I should say, still require of us to keep his commandments. Okay, it's the same God, it's the same God. Okay, it's the same rule applied to them, say it still applies to us. It doesn't matter what age we are living in. And as we get closer to the um, return of Jesus Christ, you know that wickedness will increase in the land. You know that, right? And so individual will have more of want to do their own thing, they're making their own decision, and don't and could care less about someone else. And as we come closer to uh, Jesus' uh, second coming, you see, just like in the day of Noah, the wickedness increased in the land. Individual forgot or don't want to have anything to do with thus said the Lord. So on tomorrow, Friday, preparation day, we're going to go into Gideon. Gideon. So may I share with you my devotion? Because I remember back sometime when I came into the and came into the church, came into the message or accepted the Lord and how things was and what it is now. My sister, we are far, far away from what it used to be and all the leaders. And, I, you know, it's so sad, though, because we have um, older um, individuals and they know, but yet they're quiet or they just um, they just say, okay, so-and-so is grown or so-and-so is whatever, and they know uh, right from wrong. And then, you know, so that's where we are right now, and it's so sad. And that's why most of the worldlings don't want to have anything to do with uh, Christianity because we as individuals have been in there for so long and we are still not um, abiding by the principles that that's supposed to be govern our lives. So here we go. Um, um, the My devotion is the book, The Upward Look by Ellen G. White. Ellen G. White. And so he stayed here. We must, he, he must increase. He must increase, but I must decrease. And this is coming from John 3, 30. Mm. So I, he must increase and I must decrease. And it stayed here. It says, on one occasion, the Jewish ruler sent messengers to John the Baptist to make the inquiry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me go back. I did not pray. Father God, I ask you, Father God, to take full control. I thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It says, on one occasion, the Jewish ruler sent messengers to John the Baptist to make the inquiry. Who art thou? He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And said the prophet Elias. And this is coming from John um, 1, 23. John chapter 1, verses 23. <laughs> John chapter 1, verses 23. It said, None who listen to the word of John and mark the earnestness of his manner could doubt that he referred to Christ who has been so long promised to the world. Multitude accepted the preaching of John and followed him from place to place. Many cherished in their hearts the hope that he was the Messiah. But as John saw the people turning to him, he sought to direct their minds to the coming one. In this age, just prior to the second coming of Christ in the clouds of heaven, such a work as that of John the Baptist is to be done. God calls for men 
who, who will prepare a people to stand in the great day of the Lord. The message preceded the public ministry of Christ was repent. And he was talking to the um, publican and sinners, repent. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is coming from Matthew chapter 3, verses 2. As the people who believe in Christ soon appearing, we have a message to bear. Prepare to meet their God. Our message is to be as direct as was the message of John. He rebuked kings for their uh, iniquities, notwithstanding that his life was in peril. He did not hesitate to declare God's word, and our work in the age must be done as faithfully. In order to give such a message as John gave, we must have a spiritual experience like his. We must behold God, and in beholding him, lose sight of self. Let me repeat that. Hold on. Now I lost where I was. Okay. Okay, let me go back up here. Notwithstanding that his life was in peril, he did not hesitate to declare God's words, and our work in this age must be done as faithfully. In order to give such a message as John gave, we must have a spiritual experience like his. We must behold God, and in beholding him, lose sight of self. John had by nature the faults and the weaknesses common to humanity, but the touch of divine love has transformed him. When, after Christ's ministry began, the disciples of John came to him with the complaint that all men were following the new teacher. John showed how clearly he understood his relation to the to the Messiah, and how gladly he welcomed the one of whom he had prepared the way. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3.30 Looking in faith to the Redeemer, John had risen to the height of self-obligation, meaning self-denial. He sought not to attract men to himself, but to lift their thoughts higher and still higher until they should rest upon the Lamb of God. Those who are true to their calling as messengers for God will not seek honor for themselves. Love for self will be swallowed up in love for Christ. Let me repeat this. Love for self will be swallowed up in love for Christ. They will recognize that it is their work to proclaim, as did John the Baptist, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. They will lift up Jesus, and with him humanity will be lifted up. Let me repeat that. They will lift up Jesus, and with and with him, humanity will be lifted up. So that concludes uh, my devotion, my sister, my brother. He must increase. So he must increase, but I must decrease. And that was what John the Baptist said to his followers. So we as individual, as we proclaim the message, the last message that God has given us to this dying world, my sister, my brother, we have to decrease so that he will increase, or we could say 
he must increase and we must decrease. So self-denial, we must be at that point, my sister, my brother. It's not about us, but it's about the message that God has given us to proclaim. And the message was, it says, God called for man who would prepare a people to stand in the great day of the Lord. So judgment, we are in the judgment hour. So whatever is going on in the world, my sister, my brother, that's, uh, how would you say, that is a distraction for what is really taking place. So as you sit there and watch the TV and they talk about this, they talk about that, it's a distraction for what they're really doing in the back round okay it's a distraction so here it is we are people are fighting amongst themselves uh well, some people say i'm a democrat some people say i'm a republican and then they're fighting okay then some people say uh get the jab some people say don't get the jab and then we are fighting and then we are have we have the caucasian on one hand and then you have the black hispanic and the asian and then we are fighting do you see the distraction so as long as we can be fighting amongst each other, think, think about it. As long as we fight amongst each other, the distraction is off of what the government is doing. Can you see that? Can you see that? So it's almost like a, a, um, a deflection. So they're doing whatever, and then we are so busy looking at all the small stuff and, and, and attacking each other and not going to the heart of the issue. God is a loving God. God does not force anyone to do something against their conscience. God gave us individual choices to make. Each one has to decide for themselves. Like um, Joshua said, uh, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Individual, God gave individual. Uh, um, a husband and wife, the man is the priest of the home, and the decision is based on what uh, the priest in the home established and uh, along with the wife, okay? So if anybody comes outside of that and place uh, um, pressure, my sister and brother, that is not God. You know that it's a demonic forces uh, that's, um, that's, uh, that is present. And as we say, wickedness is increasing, meaning that the presence of God is slowly being removed. So Satan is having his full force to do whatever he please, but God has the final say, my sister and brother. So each one of us have to examine ourselves. We have to say, Lord, um, you know, I, you know, give me the power. I, I, fa I fail in this. I fail in this. You know, uh, some individuals, if you want, are those ones that are cursing at your kids. You're forever cursing at this one, and you are, are swearing, and you are so upset, you so depressed, you so this, you so that, and not looking at you, looking at me. Because remember, if we point a finger at someone, there's a finger that pointing at us. So we have to remember, my sister and brother. We are the children of God, and He requires each one of us to be kind and loving to each other. That's in the home, and is also outside the home. So whatever the presence in the home, it will show out in when you go into the community. So it's, if there's um, <clears throat> tension and people are swearing, people are, are doing all the stuff that they're doing, you know, stealing, using drugs, it will show up in in other areas. So then everybody is getting being affected by what individual do. But like I state, we have to make sure that we are standing on the promises of God and searching ourselves moment by moment and say, Lord, is it me? Is it me, Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer? And when you know uh, that you have hurt someone, you need to go and get it right, my sister and brother. And because children are small and children are children, that is a gift from the Lord. You cannot, or we cannot, um, do things to those little ones. God will hold us accountable, okay? And you're thinking that because they're small, you can do whatever you please. No, my sister, we can't. We can't. Those are God's children. Those are God's children. Just like you are God's child, so is that baby. So we have to be very mindful 
of how we treat individual in the home and outside the home. We need to examine ourselves moment by moment and ask the Lord for strength. Whatever it is that you're weak in, ask the Lord to take it, my sister, brother. And once you pray that prayer, you have to get up from your knees knowing that he has given you the power to leave, whether it's a cigarette or whether you're marijuana or you sleeping around or you um, living in, uh, or you're shacking up. Back in the day, that's what we used to call it, shacking up. These days, they have another name for it. That is not of God. That is not of God. That's against God, okay? That's against God. If a man, um, if a man state that he loves you, then he's supposed to be willing to sacrifice his life for you, to give his life for you. But he, if he have not say, uh, sister, um, you know, I love you and I want to marry you, then that's not the person you need to be with. That's not the person you need to be with. Because if he did love you, he will ask for your hand in marriage. And then why would you as an individual, as a woman or a man, thinking that less of yourself and do and, and living or shacking up together or living with someone that is not your husband or you have not made the commitment my sister and brother, if you think about it, we go get a driver's license, you have to sign on the dotted line, right? When you go and buy a car, you got to sign on the dotted line, right? So why is it that you can do all that? Even to get a credit card, you got to sign on the dotted line. And so if you could do all that, but when it comes to marriage, <gasps> no, 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 I'm not doing that. We don't need that paper, but yet you need the paper for everything else. So be very mindful, my sister, my brother. It's a deception that's going around and it's, it's happening in every family. An individual, each individual have to examine themselves. So here is my hymn. You know, and it's so sad because things like that, you don't even hear uh, preachers talking about those things anymore. So you see what I'm saying, my sister and brother? It's a deception. Okay, they're not calling sin by its name. Judgment is set, my sister and brother. Stop looking at all the, turn off the news, bottom line, turn it off. There's nothing good in there. Those are, some most of those things are fake news because it's, it's been bought out. It's not, they're, not, they're not serving you the information that you need to make the, the right decision. You have to search for yourself and see whether those things are so. you got to do their own research. So turn it off. Turn it off and get in the Word of God and study for yourself. Because all what's going on in the world is a distraction. It's a distraction from, from the real thing that God wants you to know. He wants you to know that judgment is set. You are being judged. We are in the final judgment hour. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready for him to come back, my sister and brother? And somebody might say, well, brother, how do I know? You can know, my sister and brother, based on what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Are you destroying your life? Are you hurting other people knowingly? You can you can do you can do and know whether or not you on the Lord's side or you're not on the Lord's side. It's very simple. It's common sense. But here's the thing: most people don't want to use common sense these days. They want the the false information or the fake information. So that's why we have to study. We really have to study for ourselves. Okay. Even though they say so and so and so, still do your research. Don't buy anything. Even the stuff that I share, I give you the reference. I give you the scripture that you can go and do your own research. We have to be able to search the scripture for ourselves to see whether those things are so. So here is the last. I don't know, my sister and brother, why I went there. But nevertheless, someone probably need, the, need to hear that judgment is set. Judgment is already left from the dead and now it's on the living. So we have to examine ourselves moment by moment and see whether we're on God's side or Satan's side. We cannot be on both and you cannot be sitting on the fence. God's people are thinking people. 
they they, they thinking, they know how to make a decision. So you have to be able to make a decision and say, I'm on God's side. And as if you say you're on God's side, there's a different, um, there's a different standard. The standard is high. It is so high, we cannot reach that standard on our own. The only way we can meet, can, can reach it is that if we decrease and let him increase. So that means to say he is the one that's carrying us through. The judgment has set. The judgment has set. The book has been opened. How shall we stand in the great day? When every thoughts and words and action, God the righteous judge shall weigh. How shall we stand in that great day? How shall we stand in that great day? Shall we be found before him wanting or with our sins washed away? The work is begun with those who are sleeping, meaning that the people that died. Soon the living here will be tried. Out of the books of God remembrance, his decision to abide. How shall we stand in the great day? How shall we stand in the great day? Shall we be found before him wanting or with our sins all washed away? Oh, how shall we stand that moment of searching when all our sins those books reveal? When from the courts each case decided shall be granted no appeal. How shall we stand in that great day? How shall we stand in that great day? Shall we be found before him wanting? That means to say that we have not confessed our sins to him. Or will our sins all washed away? Those are individuals that search in their heart and ask in the Lord to wipe out whether they're, they're um, in a uh, different relationship or they're eating the wrong food. You see what I'm saying? They heed their examine themselves and say, Lord, you know what? I said this and this was not right. Can you forgive me? Those are the individual, my sister, mother, that with our sins all washed away. So there's only two sides. You either could be on God's side or you're on Satan's side. And there's no middle ground. No middle ground, my sister, brother. So how are you standing, my sister, brother? I hope and pray that you have made your calling and election sure, standing on the winning team. From Genesis to Revelation, you know that Jesus wins in the end. So how are you standing, my sister, brother? So which one, which side are you on? Only you can make that decision. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you for this message. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that you did not leave me here by myself. I thank you that you gave me the strength and the energy, Father God, that I needed for this message today. Father God, if we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, I ask you that you will wash us and make us whiter than snow. Once you've done that, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to take the empty vessels, Father God. We give you permission to use us, to mold us, to shape us into what you want us to be. And at the end of the day, Father God, we forever give you all the praise, Father God, the honor and glory that is due your name. Father God, we love you. We love you. We love you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so uh, with that, if you um, receive a nugget out of this message today, can you hit uh, the like button, make a comment, hit the share button. Hey, Earl. Hey, my friend. How are you? I hope you are doing well. I hope you are doing well. I love you. I love you. Hope you are doing well. I hope you and Shirley's doing well as well. And so, my sister and brother, so if you're on Facebook, hit the like button, hit the share button. Um, then you can follow me over YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the bell um hit the bell notification you can also hit the subscribe button and thank you so much for going over to youtube and helping me grow my youtube channel i thank you i appreciate you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today may god continue to richly bless you and your family but before you go one more thing may i have a hug may i have a hug so here we go here we go one
two, three, one more, four. Thank you so much, my sister and brother. So you can state that you can say you got a hug today. I love you and appreciate you until tomorrow. Be blessed and take care. And tomorrow we're going to go into uh, Gideon. That is our topic for tomorrow. So thank you, thank you. I love you, love you, love you. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.